What is up, my Backburner family? We're actually gonna start a new playthrough. And we are going to... This was the playthrough where I died to Huntress. I made her a friend fo as a friend forever and ever and ever. So let's start a new playthrough here. Obviously, I am Lola. Always Lola. Let's just start. Let's just get into this. Let's just see if what nonsense we can do from the beginning. <coughs> you wake up on the beach, soaking wet, salt water stinging the inside of your throat as if you nearly drowned. Water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, but not where you came from or a single fact about your life. What do you know? What you do know is that. Despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. <coughs> wow, really went down the wrong pipe, huh? You need a minute, or can I go now? Because I can give you a minute, we've got plenty of time, endless time, really. An eternity if you catch my drift. Whoa, not now, Ocean. Sorry, Lola. May I continue? Please go. <laughs> Please go on. Okay, then. As I was. <coughs> As I was saying, you look down at your feet, ankle deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. Yuck. A decomposing face stares up at you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit a stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and other ick. Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. What will you do? Close your eyes, run, or dig up that face. I did dig up that face before. Let's do... Run. You turn away from this wretched sight and begin to run. But the beach is endless. Despite how far you run, you get nowhere. Exhausted, you look up and look behind you. Your foot spits erased by soft blue waves. You turn in inland. Considering your lack of options, you got no choice but to walk into the brush. However, the beauty of the beach is not shared by the darkness of the palmy woods before you. There's nothing inviting about the shadowy forest. Terror freezes you in your steps. Why are you trying to run away? This is paradise. You're here to enjoy yourself, don't you know? Have a little bit of fun. Take charge of your own experience. Well, that was sure sure weird, that voice again. Do oceans normally talk? Your memory isn't right, but you're pretty sure you remember learning as a child that oceans do not speak directly to people in spooky terms. Your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your feet. So here we go. I think this is an opportunity to get killed on day one. When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand ne there next to you. You stare down, frozen. A voice calls out from behind. Little help, please. You turn around, and when you see what's waiting for your jaw just about hits the ground. Huntress, you betrayed me. Rafe, you're weird, but I think I might be able to solve secrets with you. Spirit. Trapper is just... I don't know. He's something else. Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Each of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. Your heart begins to race. Curiosity, fear, desire. You can't help but stare at these casually dressed... Let's call them killers. I don't know. Not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out there. So many competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you are completely paralyzed. Hello. There are weird days, and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at the monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy, sexy monsters, though. What do you do? I'm gonna kick it back. I, t I, I tossed it back before. Let's kick it back. You swing your feet uh, and awkwardly strike the volleyball, sending it bouncing across the sand towards Huntress. It doesn't make it all the way, 
Someone stares at you silently, observing your unsportsmanlike shame. They must be wondering, have you ever s even seen a volleyball before? That's surely what I'm wondering right now. It's not a soccer ball. What a dork. You feel so awkward that you can barely see straight. But through the haze of your embarrassment, you catch Rafe looking at you from the corner of your eye. Huntress jogs the rest of the way to grab the volleyball and then all, all turn and head back to the court. Alone again, you look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion onto their private beach. Should you be frightened, worried, excited? I did refer to them as killers not to give too much away, but at the same time, damn, they are looking very appealing in their own way. And nobody so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, Lola. You were made for this. Well, geez. If the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared, I'm sure it's all going to work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. It seems like you'd, you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. You derailed the game just by showing up, Nitwick. And I guess you're also a Nitwick. Look, it's best to just go with what Trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a simple game. What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean they're here to do more than distract from my total domination? Deep sigh. <sighs> that was Rafe. That sigh means he was done with the game too. Either that, or he saw a butterfly or something. Look, I don't care why this slack-jawed moron is here. I just want to know, can I kill them or not? You know you can't. At least not yet. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey Lola, you might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. Be warned. Answer quickly and answer well. This is a time quiz and it will be very important later. I don't think this is a time quiz at all. At all. Very important or not important in any way whatsoever. Probably that one. I can't remember. How attractive would you say you are? I said I was average. I think I said I was average before. What did I say before? I said not at all. What did I say before? I don't know. I'm going to go arrogant. Very. I'd say I'm very attractive. That's what you think very attractive is? Compared to this? Trapper flexes and his muscles are so tight. You can practically see the blood running through his veins. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, before I said super strength, I'm going to say flight. Flight, for sure. Technically, I suppose I can fly. Honestly, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. As far as I go, I'm still not where I want to be. That was your best... What was your best subject in school? I said math. History skipping class. Let's go skipping class. Maybe that will appeal to spirit more. Right? But she always reads books, so maybe history? Nah, skipping class. You could say I majored in skipping class, huh? If I had ever gone to school, I'm sure I would have done great in skipping class. I prefer skipping over walking almost always. She actually thinks I mean skipping. What's your favorite animal? I said that before. That was weird. Let's say dog. Dog? You look absolutely adorable in a little puppy mask. What's your favorite color? Blue. Spirit skin is blue, so hopefully that's good. Blue isn't good for productivity. Makes people want to be lazy. What's your dream job? Nightclub promoter, astronaut. Nightclub promoter, let's say that. Definitely nightclub promoter. Everyone groans, and let's be honest, they're right to do so. <laughs> Everyone hated that answer. Luring folks into the dark? Not just anyone can do that. Best flavor of ice cream? Horse flesh. Mmm, horse flesh. 
I mean, uh, ocean sounds. My favorite flavor of is pain. Same. Same here. Mine is vanilla swirled with pain. I think mint chip is a great flavor. Ever conceived myself. But enough about ice cream, am I right? Hold on a second, that, this reminds me. I am right, always. It's a lesson you should learn before you go too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive. Pick mint chip. We're teaching lessons now, narrator, you rascal. Kill or be killed is the rule on this island. Even for faceless voices. Tell me what's your favorite best flavor of ice cream. Vanilla. Best flavor is vanilla. You got a reading comprehension problem? I just told you mint chip was where it's at. You almost bought yourself a game over there, buddy. That's right. I can end your life whenever I want. I'm in control, so don't you forget it. If I say you like mint chip, you like mint chip. Now try it again. Tell me what's your favorite best flavor. Mint chip. The best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're gonna do just fine. Oh, now that they say know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants you to start getting to know them. I'm Trapper. I pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on the island. I don't like losers. If you want to know what a loser is, say hello to Rafe. Hi, I'm Rafe. I'm nothing like everyone else. I like nice people and love big dumb idiots. Hey, what's up? I'm Spear. I don't like most things. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time. But the things I do hate, I really hate, you know? Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering and society is a carefully calculated lie to keep everyone up subservient to those in power. It's better to choose to just not take part. Jeez, it's like she was downright murdered by society. She hates it so much. Oh, no, wait. I'm remembering Spirit Story now, and that's almost exactly what happened. Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let these bu bummers get you down. There's lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Not from you. You permanently friend zoned me in your basement. Yeah, there is. If you know what I mean. Grow up. Grow a body. I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fog body. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. Yes, really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. Don't speak for me. I also hate it. Stop speaking entirely, actually. For the first time ever. I agree with Rafe. Let's move on. Otherwise, they'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. If we're done playing, let's do something else instead. Wow. For once, I actually agree with the meathead. I say we go to my yacht. It's the massive boat dock nearby. I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Rafe froze his eyes. Don't mind him. He just hates fun and happiness. No, I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth. The way it flaunted needlessly and the cruelty and dangers. What about hanging out by the pool? The pool sounds good. I found the water calming, simple and beautiful. Hey. What about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. Are you all serious? That there's a perfectly good lounge to chill out at right here. I'm tired and besides, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? So, I accidentally chose that. I didn't want that. This is uh, the lounge the spirit with the spirit. I think the pool will be good. I'm down. I'll be down for a dip in the pool. Whoa, the pool? You, you actually want to go to the pool? I, uh, well, I mean, sure, why not? I've got good ideas. What's wrong with my ideas? The pool is great, everyone knows that. All over the world, if people agree on one thing, it's that pools are great. Look, we've got a whole ocean right here, and they still put a pool in a pool because pools are just, you know, great. It's a real special treat. And you thought it was bad when he stayed quiet. Hold on for just one moment. This is Dwight and Claudette, our activity coordinators. They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. They're the only help main remaining on the island. This place we call Murderer's Island. Cue dramatic musical flourish. None of the others survived. Um, survived the interview process, I mean. Hence, why we shall hear, hear the fur, refer to them as survivors with a capital S. 
These two have worked here a long time, so very long. I don't actually know how long it's been. Sorry, anyway. I should probably let Claudette do their mandated jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating with a nervous energy that is starting to give me the creeps. We will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend waiting for us to be present to present you with your options whenever possible and don't just run off to various activities unsupervised. We don't have much autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our job. Achievement a lot of Seth's much. The most you could do is help us get off this eye. Dwight, yes, pardon me, please follow us. Hey, narrator, yes, something I can help you with? Those two, Claude and du Dwight. They did us start to mention something about wanting to escape. Is escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? Escape them? No, oh, no, 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 I think you're mistaken. It seemed like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right, that, yes, that's true, he was. But he just meant that he wants to get to the other vacation island getaway a couple miles south of here. It has much fancier accommodations in this island. It's one of those big corporate outfits, quite exclusive, where all the famous celebrities hang out very luxurious. Doesn't quite have the charm of this island, though. <clears throat> Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all that money comes a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong. Now, now, go off you go. It's time for all an activity on this island. Your decisions matter, mostly. When I agree with them, not like that other island. So what will it be? Err, err. <laughs> I want to cozy it up with the spirit. Err. We're going to the pool. Rafe moves. This is the pool? I thought this was the hot tub. Rafe moves ahead to the pool at a pace that could almost be considered ja jaunty. If a creature is so lanky, they appear to appear to made entirely of elbows and ankles could jaunt. Um, what's going on with Rafe's face? Is that a smile? Is that what a smile looks like when he does it? What can I say? Being enveloped by water is comforting. It's quiet. It's ominous. And you know, Rafe looks back over his sh each shoulder to make sure no one besides you is within earshot. The fire can't get me. Oh yeah, he hates fire. Super normal stuff here, as usual. Oh great, it's Claudia and Dwight. What do these two want? Since everyone's at the pool, we figured we'd bring over some of our most popular pool accessories, Lola. Which of these is particularly interesting to you? Foam noodles, inflatable lounger, basketball hoop, goggles and snorter, snorkel. I would like the inflatable lounger. Those loungers look pretty comfortable. Sleeping during the day completely out in the open like this? You're really making yourself a target. If someone were to, I don't know, try and throw an ax directly at you, well, psst, you'd sure be an easy, easy to see. Not that I'm saying I would do that to you. I prefer a challenge. Huntress may not be into it, but it sure looks like Spirit co-signs this choice since she immediately snakes the coolest one. It's in the shape of a casket. A really cute casket. I don't really do water. As long as I'm floating on top of it, that's fine, I guess. Spirit grabs you, the black unicorn floaty, and sets it in the water next to her. And since you also enjoyed the fine art of relaxing here, you can share my umbrella. Yes, getting some points with the spirit. Well, come on, that's charming. Something about the water and being this close to spirit is putting you in a playful mood you might regret. Do you splash her just a little bit? I promise she doesn't have a cell phone in her pocket. She died before they got popular. I'm gonna resist the urge to splash because she's gonna hate that. You stand perfectly still in the water so as not to send a single drop in Spirit's direction, thus enraging her and resulting in her your own demise. Oh wow, she passed out. Probably from how boring you are. Hope she doesn't get a sunburn. For a waking nightmare, you almost could almost believe that you're starting to relax a bit and forget about how much you can't remember. 
It's as if the sun's very rays have a calming effect on you, your body tranquilized by the soft light from overhead, coupled with the cool breeze rolling in from the sea. And you're not alone. I feel recharged by the gentle warmth of the ocean's car caress. If it was a little too warm, that might have been my fault. Ew. Also, this is a pool, not an o the ocean. Okay, everyone. Just let him finish. Thanks, Lola. I know this probably doesn't seem like me, but would anyone want to play a game of Marco Polo? Yes, I love games. I'll go first. Someone blindfold me. Of course, Trapper has a blindfold ready to go. It's as if he had it in his hands before you even spoke. Uh, and, and did he just wink? And did you just bite your lip? Good thing you're getting re reined in because it sure seemed like you were about to act up. Mini games consist of two parts. We know this already. They're skill checks. They're in-game skill checks. I don't want you to repeat anything. Let's go. I got the wraith. Perfect. I got the wraith again. Perfect. I completely missed. Perfect. I got him again. Perfect. Jeez, I can't see. Ugh. Perfect. That was pretty good, Lola. No, it wasn't. Don't lie. Just ignore him. You've just been thrown into a very weird situation. Uh, you held your own. I respect that. That was a good game. I say we celebrate. By throwing this waiter whose name I forgot into the pool. Defend Dwight. Have some fun. <clears throat> Let's have some fun. Hilarious. Bullying truly is the gift that keeps on giving. You grab Dwight's leg and help Trapper give him the heave ho. You know what? Sorry. I can't pretend to support you on this one. Only Trapper is this sadistic. It's only a pool guy. I know it's all in good fun or whatever, but not on my murderer's island. Yeah, that's right. This place really is called murderer's island, but that doesn't mean we're cool with bullying. You're on thin ice, friend. I'm no expert, even though as an omnipotent narrator, omnipotent narrator, I probably should be, but I think that means it's time for the next activity. So I had some fun, come on. Seems like the next activity is mealtime, how quaint. You were expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so, more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic like you'd find on on cable. Dwight and Claudette usher you a seat, but there's very limited seating directly next to you. And oh great, terrific, it seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to a certain p other people either. To start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Rafe or Trickster. Oh yeah, Trickster is here. Surprise? Yeah, well, they don't call him expected, sir. I'm sorry. Even I get nervous around crowds of killers, and my whole shit gets a little flustered. So he showed up at the other place when I went to the location of Spirit's decision, but he didn't show up at the pool. Hey there, you looking good Lola, real good. And we literally can't let Huntress and Trapper sit together. No seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit at the table if they sit side by side. Look at this. We can't even fit everyone on screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but it's not. It was completely intentional. Let that be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice, got it? Okay, Dwight, Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side, the rest of them will sit opposite of you. The Huntress and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over the s a spit. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat, seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. My favorite. 
Meat is good. Meat is murder. Which you know, considering what you've been up to. Who are you to get judgy now? I'm just, I'm just sharing facts. And you need to know murder something to eat its meat. So that's like technically murder. Technically true is the best kind of true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, Lola, you think I'm... What? You thinking what I'm thinking? It's gonna be a person on that spit, right? Or some parts of overlapping people, perhaps. I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button down prints, you know? Ooh, when you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours and we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delicate meal. Wow, he's right for a change, cause I am with my broad axe. It's a perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twine. First, who says twine? Twine. Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked. No blood. Uh, you two and your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough, grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option, Obs. The hell it is. Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you like. Please stop, please. I hate when we speak, we fight, or talk, or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can't do it. I have the skull of Azarov. Great, instead of slicing it up, you can club it to death. To a second death. Hey Lola, I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to carve Felix, I mean dinner. Otherwise this will go on for hours. No, no hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 hours straight. And it doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they will take an even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value in maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason they're always terrified of... of tetanus. Hey, why don't you let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea, we'd hate for it to get cold. He hated it when it got cold. Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Mini game time! I know minigame. I know how to play. Whoop. 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 Oh, I'm so scared of this one. Whoop. Oh, I missed. That was pretty good. I like to see what you could do with le a less clumsy weapon. Yeah. I said it. Machetes are dumb. Dinner is finally served, for real. The sounds especially coming from the mass killers while they eat, which involves lifting their masks and shoving food up there behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to really be embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell, I mean. Come on. We're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Clotted and Dwight aren't the only ones who been working their butts off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is not only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just tried to mash stuff through there. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, Lola. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow, you might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. Do you see how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like it. I think they want an explanation why. What do you want to tell them? I'm just gonna say, this is gross. Everything about this dinner is an abomination. From what is almost certainly human meat, to the lack of manners, to the talk of dismembered parts, 
and these noises. Everything is so vile, I might throw up. Even Spirit is talking about number twos. I thought she was uh, the classy one. Oh, well then. I didn't realize our eating habits grossed you out. Don't be so judgmental, sheesh. If I could feel shame or sadness, I might be experiencing both right now. But what I can feel is rage, and I'm furious you just ruined the meal. I have a whole leg to eat. Even though you're in the hot seat now, you're not nearly as panicked as you probably should be. That's almost certainly the lack of calories catching up to you, and you feel your whole body begin to shut itself down. Oh hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and guide, narrator to the narrator, the ocean. Not sure how I feel about the characterish characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. No one can tell you, not unless you follow the right path, or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them, because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise, others lead to something even worse. Starting scenes over and having to fast forward back to where you were Am I right? For this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are we? Why are you here? Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague, mysterious, I gotta give it up to the Ocean's character. That's some quality early game storytelling. Hold on, I'm back. One more piece of advice. You've made many choices by now. Some of them I liked, some of them I did not. It's in your best interest to make more choices that I like. I think I need the coins to somehow get to the other island. You wake up to find Rafe holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cool, cool water into your mouth. Now that you're finally alone, Rafe looks at you eagerly. You said some pretty hurtful things back there, but I'm into you. I'm onto you. You're trying to push us away, aren't you? Afraid of what might happen if we got close. Did you really mean what you said? Swear it. No, swear it. I swear it. Rafe nods the nod of someone who's just realized that Lola is a liar. He's disappointed in you. I'm disappointed in you. And you know, deep down, you're disappointed in you also. More so than you uh, usual. Oh boy. Looks like he's about to monologue. Now have you done it? Um... How do I say this? It's just honestly, honesty is important to me. I've been burned too many times. Something about the word burn makes Rafe look away, far away, eyes brimming with tears and yet at the same time dead. I understand. Rafe looks back at you with those sad eyes, wanting so badly to believe you. He looks down at the ground. I have something very important to tell you. It's about something very special to me. It's something, not something I tell everyone, but you know how important honesty is to me. I can't expect that from you. If I'm not honest in return. Oh great, I bet he's got crabs. It's about my special bell. What? It belonged to my father. He gave it to me before he, um, before he and my mother, well, they had to go away. If I was in danger, I was supposed to ring the, this bell. It, it didn't really work but it's all I have of my family with, with me. Wow, Rafe, thank you for telling me. Here, hold it. Whoa, Rafe just gave you his bell. Sound the alarms. What are you gonna do with that thing? Uh, ring the bell loudly. What's a bell if it doesn't make a sound? You'll never know because the first thing you do is ring the, sh the crap out of it. Rafe freaks out and takes the bell back. Why did you do that? I feel like I might be in danger. I'm lost in your eyes. Then don't look at them. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on this strange island. And then you can see Cl Dwight and Claudette, only to find that it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand. <sighs> Oh man, sorry. Clipboards in hand, which they're waving in the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary and attend each event as scheduled. Plane sick for cute, 
flirt points was not part of this evening's activities that strictly slotted in for after after campfire story time at this rate we'll be late plain sake no i was no time for excuses well there is but that's scheduled for after what comes after the flirting go 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 all right story time once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. Yes, can, can I click? We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone. And we're not going to say who. So don't worry, you hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means that we're behind on, on time for evening activities and we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Just one story, but story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets a share? How will we decide who? Oh great, we have to decide as a group. That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head off, clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. Sorry, everyone. I think they're talking about me, to be honest. I still don't understand this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. Been there before, even though it's taking some pressure off of me, which is the absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anyone ev here ever happened? Anything here ever happened on schedule ever, even once? Damn it, Donald. If you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick and then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Fuss and Muss are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. We all know you love to kill. It's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. But we still gotta get started on so story time. So, Lola, who do you think should go? Oh, damn it. That's a name. Please pick someone. You were picked last time and your story was amazing. But... I am angry at you for how you did me last time. You are psychotic. And you? Let's go, Trapper. I choose you, Trapper. Whoa, whoa. This entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the catchphrases, will ya? Yes, of course. You want to hear my story. It's a good one. And an old one, too. This is an infamous tale about two young friends from my hometown. Best buds who did everything and anything together. Fish hunts, fight, skip rocks, climb the tallest trees, climb the highest peaks. The most dangerous something was the more they wanted to do it. The more dangerous something was, the more they wanted to do it. But everything changed one day when the slightly older friend Ask the old other for a favor. My father doesn't want me going out with you anymore. He said, we're dangerous together. We take risks we shouldn't. And if I keep hanging out with you, he says, one day I'm going to get hurt. Do you think you could come by and tell my dad? We'll be careful so we can be so be friends. Of course, said the other friend who was always eager to please his best mate. So the two went to see the concerned father who puffed away at his pipe as he listened to every promise his son's pal made about being more cautious. But when the slightly younger and slightly smaller boy finished, his friend's father responded, stone face, no sorry. This is best for both of you. I don't want my son hanging out with you anymore. And that's that. The young boy was so crestfallen he fell left immediately. No one would see him cry. He would not give them the satisfaction. Or is he talking about himself? Especially because if they did, they might tell others in town and they'd all think him weak. Worse, 
his own father would never forgive his son for letting others see him that way. But he was too upset to go home right away or be spotted on the path. So instead he sat outside his friend's house in a little hiding spot they had often sat in during rainstorms or when they didn't want anyone to see them trading interesting rocks they dug up. It was quiet as he stifled his own tears and that's when he heard it. A sound and order waf wafting alongside the pipe, smoke carried on dark winds betrayal. Thanks, Dad. I didn't want to hang out with him anymore, but I didn't want to tell him that. He'd be a big baby about it. It's okay. I get it. Don't blame you at. Don't blame you all at all either. He's soft and needy. You need strong friends. Someday you really need would have ended up getting hurt because of him. You need friends you can rely on. Trapper looked angry. The muffled tears stopped and the hiding spot that had been a pit of sadness now overflowed with rage. The boy went home. If anyone passed him on the path, all they saw was determination. That night, he spoke to no one. He ate no dinner. He slept no sleep. The next day, he got up early and sat near the tallest tree in the woods by his former friend's house. It was the one tree no kid in town had ever conquered. Its top remained untouched. He remained there till dark before he finally went home. He did this for eight days. On the ninth, his old mate finally passed by. Hey, what are you doing here? Asked, asked the Judas. Nothing, out hunting squirrels and sat down to eat this apple, lied the younger boy. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I hope you're okay. I can't believe my dad did that. It's so unfair. Yes, it was truly unthinkable, answered the boy through a smile that carried no warmth. Yeah, well, okay, I'll see you around. But before the betrayer could leave, his old friend called out to him. I'm going to climb this tree, he said. I'm going to make it to the top. The hell you are. No one can do that. And they definitely can't do it by themselves. He had me. He had him. I can, and I will. I understand why you can't, though. Your dad said you're afraid and you'll get hurt. I'm not afraid, he's afraid, replied the friend, now seething with shame and with his own rage. Oh, forget what my dumb old father said. I'll do it with you. You'll see I'm not afraid. And so the two climbed and climbed, making each, each making it higher than they ever had before. And they continued to climb. But whether they would have reached the top will never be known because the turncoat, the boy who had made his father lie for him, fell before he could make it all the way up. Some say it was no accident that his old chum pushed him, but how could he? He was the weak one after all. Of course, such a weak child could never send his best friend to his death. This was an accident, tragic for sure, but nothing more. Of course. A month later, though, no one could explain how the bo dead boy's father choked to death on his own pipe. Uh, yeah, definitely a good call on staying quiet after that. Silence really is best at a time like this. Crap! What about you, Lola? What did you think of my tale? None of that actually happened, right? Were you the boy in the story? Dang, that was bleak. Now that's a story. Um, that was an interesting story. I don't think it was that great. I feel like he might have been the boy. None of that actually happened, right? He doesn't want to say who. That was bleak. Yes, it was. Did I get a coin before for listening? Guess he liked that response. He's handing you a gold coin. On that note... Everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is ocean slowly o lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace, tranquility that lasts for all of seven seconds before Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want you to hear something from a big fish like me, something special. 
Those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in this an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Trapper reports you. Finally, those dweebs are gone. Now that I know we're totally alone, we can talk, really talk. But let's get away from this ash and smoke and take a dip in the pool. Whether it's water, sweat, or my enemy's blood, I prefer my muscles glistening and not dried. A dip in the pool with the trapper? You come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow him. An offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. Okay. You and your storyteller friend slip into the water. It's just the right temperature from an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion could handle it. Trapper looks surprisingly relaxed. That's definitely weird. Okay, the small bubbles rising up in the water around him might have something to do with that. Look, Lola. I didn't want to reveal anything in front of the others. You never know when a loser is really a maggot. Now though, I want to hear what you really thought of my story. What was its per real purpose? To, do to establish dominance. Honesty is important. Vengeance is dark. There was none. There's gotta be a meaning to the story. There's, there can't be just none. To establish dom dominance, to scare everyone and establish dominance. Interesting answer. Trapper stares at you for a long, way too long. It's like he's looking into your soul, but he says nothing. He's still staring. He stares for such a long time, it becomes quite romantic. And then, as it keeps going on, it becomes downright horrifying. And chill, a chill runs down your spine. Finally, Dai and Claudette show up and say everyone is convening at the fire pit. How dare you interrupt me? I mean us. No, wait me i meant me trapper throws his cleaver at dwight and clotted's feet where the hell was he even holding his cleaver between those cheeks <laughs> more importantly what do you think of his little cleaver toss scold him laugh haha <laughs> you see how scared they both looked that was amazing serves the servants right i'm being completely mean to them this time clever wordplay you're all right by me Another coin! Trapper flips you a gold coin, which he definitely was keeping in his crotch. It's too warm to have been anywhere else. I really feel like gathering these coins will help me off the island. You feel your toes tingling and notice the temperature has dropped significantly. It's getting chilly in the water. Usually it's so warm around you. You mind if I snuggle up your way? Yes, I do mind. Before we have to spend too much time watching you sit there all alone, trying to figure out exactly what you're doing with your life, we figured we'd let you know that it's time for bed. And you're kind of the last person out enjoying the facility so well. The thing is, you see, we can't really get our night started until yours ends, so pack it up, kiddo. Your fireside sleeping arrangements away. They want to get stabby stabby with each other. You head over to campfire, the heat is comforting on a ch this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Trapper's story. Are you being led to your demise by an untrustworthy narrator? Hey, wait a second, I swear to you that you're not. Come on, you gotta trust me at least a little more than you trust the Trapper. Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive. Their now familiar creepy smile stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lit by firelight. We must apologize for accommodations. They look creepy. Yeah, they do look creepy. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand over a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you to ease. Just try to keep the volume to a minimum or our other guests aren't the types. You want to rob of their beauty sleep. Yeah, let's do this.
let's see if we can find something on the the radio. Um, which one do I want? Let's see that one. Oh, hey, this one's pretty cool. Oh, hey, it, it's just repeating. Cool, no matter how many times you listen to, you can't sleep. Who would you like to summon to your side as you lay by the fire? I want to summon the spirit. That would be cool, right? Spirit, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Spirit tells you her secret for falling asleep while she's feeling restless. I like to listen to flute music, dab on some essential oils, and steam my pores. That sounds amazing. Really? What? Even the dead like to relax. <clears throat> I don't really have any of those things around. Spirit reaches out and presents you with a unique item. It's a small comb carved from bamboo. I guess you could hold on to this. It was a gift from my mother. I will want it back though, as if you lose it. And if you lose it well, you get your revenge on me. If it's the last thing I do. You finally start to feel sleepy, except maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky. By now, you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head. But this one is still undeniably odd. Look, I'm not saying that my feelings are hurt because you choose to swim in some pathetic little teacup when you could could have swam in the vastness of entire uh, me, I guess. I'm just saying that you've made a foolish decision and I won't forget it. My feelings aren't hurt. I just lost some respect for you, that's all. You awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. Huntress is riffling through your pockets. Oh my god, Huntress. Leave me alone. I'm so mad at you. Oh, you're awake. <clears throat> I wasn't stealing from you. You're trying to steal my shiny things! Oh my gosh! <clears throat> Merely trying to get to know you better by seeing what sort of trinkets you keep close. I saw you with the spirit right before bedtime. Look, I'm not saying I don't trust them, but well, yes, I'm saying that. I don't trust anyone I don't already have tied up. So, I was making sure they didn't do anything fishy. And, I was making sure you're not a soldier. Soldiers killed my father, you know? While I got you here, while I got you, you should really consider spending some more time with me. I'm not scary. You're not? Not at all. I'm just a lost girl on a big island. I've been watching you since you got here, you know? Not in a creepy way. Huntress pauses for a long moment. Alright, in a charmingly creepy way. I've noticed how fun loving you seem. If you spend some time with me tomorrow, maybe I'll take you to this special place I found. It's all mine. None of the other killers have been able to find me there. It's quiet and isolated. Maybe I'll even show you how to make beef stroganoff. That all sounds very enticing. I'll let you get back to bed. It's been a long day. Shh. Huntress places a gigantic can on your forehead and your eyes flutter closed. Finally, alone. For real this time, maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. <clears throat> like, I'm, I'm mad at her for tying me up and everything. Wait a second. Where are we? This isn't OGs. Oh, it is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all the contestants talk about. Talk directly to the camera. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I eat uh, an all organic diet of raw deer, bear, bear, and human, and I'm fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. There's always time to get turn things around, like that one time I spent day and night searching for food in vain, only to turn return to my cabin, spent and starving. 
to find a family of squirrels nest nesting in my chimney. They were delicious. If I'm being honest, I want to kill just about every person I meet within a minute of meeting them. Even a few, the few people I can tolerate, I want to see suffer for a long time before I kill them. But this person, for some reason, I would like them to continue living. For now, one false step and aha. Well, you know, everyone calls me Trapper for a reason and they better call me Trapper. I swear, if I watch this later and l you list me as Evan, I'm going to kill the, the Chiron guy. Yeah, today was fun. I don't want to get ahead of myself or really um, invest in something that might hurt me. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll just see how it goes. Or maybe they'll realize I'm the one for them. They seem pretty smart. So that's probably what happened. I gotta learn to go easy on myself. Who could love me if I can't love myself? I know that's everything th everyone thinks of me as a beautiful cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. Circulation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute hat and robe. Okay, those are a choice, sure. If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least that beats being stabbed in it. Besides, if I'm gonna get bloody revenge on society that has used me and throw me away, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a little help. Your eyes open, the sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky and you feel great, totally rested. All right, guys, I think at this point I should call it. We actually flew by that super quickly. Super quickly compared to the other playthrough. And we did some different things and look like we are on the good side of the wraith more than more than uh, anyone else. So uh, I did not try interacting at all with the Huntress this time around. Even though she did come searching my pockets while I was trying to sleep. So uh, I did try to kill myself at the beginning. I guess I failed. I don't know if you can kill yourself on the first day. I know the only time that you can actually do so and get a game over is when you disagree with what type of ice cream flavor you like with the narrator. But I'm wondering if there's any other ways to die. So no matter what your time zone may be, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good morning, afternoon, and evening. Bye-bye.